This is Liz and her cat, Oliver. Liz has been worried for a while because Oliver's health seems to have deteriorated recently. He's thirsty all day, urinating more and losing weight. But his appetite is still good. His coat is duller, however, and he's become quite lethargic. Cats that exhibit these signs could be suffering from diabetes. But how does diabetes occur in the first place? Food that people or animals eat is broken down in the stomach first and then digested in the small intestine, where it's absorbed to be used in the body. One of the substances absorbed is a type of sugar called glucose, which is carried to the organs and muscle cells by the blood. In a non-diabetic pet, insulin, a regulating hormone produced by the pancreas, allows glucose to enter cells where it is used as fuel. In some diabetic cats, the pancreas does not make enough insulin. In most others, some insulin is produced, but it is not enough to get their cells to respond because they are insulin resistant. In both cases, their cells do not receive enough glucose and too much glucose remains in the blood. Since Oliver is diabetic, his kidneys filter glucose from the blood, but are unable to reabsorb all of this glucose. Instead, it is eliminated from the body through the urine. As a result, Oliver has to urinate more, which in turn makes him thirstier, so he will drink more. Because the body's cells cannot absorb the glucose, Oliver does not have enough energy. And as a result, Oliver starts to eat more. However, since he cannot utilize the glucose, he will continue to lose weight, become weaker and lose his appetite. Thankfully, we can overcome this. We can administer insulin. Sounds like it's time for a trip to the veterinarian. Now these signs could be caused by other diseases such as bladder infections, kidney disease or an overactive thyroid. So to be sure, we'll take urine and blood samples. First, we'll test his urine, and if his urine is positive for glucose, then we can collect a little drop of blood and check his blood glucose, and if his blood glucose is elevated, that will confirm our diagnosis. To perform the blood test, we need to collect a small sample of blood to check his blood glucose and check his fructosamine concentration. We'll also test for other common conditions, such as urinary tract infections, kidney disease, and an overactive thyroid. This can be done a variety of ways, but today we'll take a blood sample from his neck. Many of the tests need to be analyzed in our laboratory, but while we're waiting for those results, we can check a little drop of blood from his ear flap with our glucose meter or glucometer. You may also use this to check his progress at home if we make a diagnosis of diabetes. If our results today are above those that we expect in a non-diabetic animal, then it's possible that we may be looking at a diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. And we can confirm this with the results of our additional tests. One of the things we need to do to treat Oliver's diabetes is to administer insulin. We're going to use can insulin, which is specially developed and prepared for use in dogs and cats. It's important to administer can insulin twice daily at 12 hour intervals. One way to do this is with a traditional U40 insulin syringe. We use a fine needle that Oliver will hardly feel. But first, we have to prepare the insulin. According to the most recent label advice for this product, it is important to shake the bottle thoroughly to ensure the insulin is uniformly milky, especially before using the bottle for the first time. Turn the bottle upside down. Remove the needle cap and pierce the rubber stopper. Then withdraw insulin into the syringe. Then gently flick the syringe to move any air bubbles to the top of the syringe. Next, remove the air bubbles and make sure that the plunger is level with the required dose. Can insulin is injected subcutaneously, which means under the skin and not into a muscle. First, pinch up a little bit of skin along the side of your cat's body in the area from behind the shoulder blade to the middle of the lower back. You'll want to alternate body location and sides each time you inject. Then, 
introduce a needle at a slight angle to its full length. Depress the plunger and deliver the insulin under the skin and then withdraw. See how easy that is? Once you're done, be sure to store the can insulin upright, not lying on its side. Make sure you protect the vial from heat and light. You may find it useful to store the can insulin in the refrigerator. Another way to administer can insulin is with the vet pen. Vet pen is reusable and lets you easily and accurately select and deliver the proper dose. To prepare a VET pen already loaded and primed with a can insulin cartridge following instructions, screw on a new needle before each use and mix until the insulin appears uniformly milky. To remove air from the needle and check the VET pen is working properly, dial one unit on the dose selector. Holding the VET pen pointing vertically upwards, Push and hold the release button down fully until the arrow points to the start line. Insulin should drip actively or squirt out of the needle tip. Next, select the number of units that have been prescribed by your veterinarian by turning the dose selector carefully. You can inject your cat along the side of its body in the area from behind the shoulder blade to the middle of the lower back. Insert the needle through the skin and push the release button down fully. Hold the button until the dose selector has returned to the start line. Then count slowly to five to allow the injection to be completed and remove the needle from the skin. Once you're done, follow the instructions provided to store the remaining can insulin. I'll determine the number of insulin units Oliver needs to start with. Then I'll examine him at regular intervals and review the notes that you're going to make to track his health. Using all of that information, I can adjust the dose until he's properly regulated. In animals that are poorly regulated or need further investigation, hospitalisation may be necessary for a day or so. This allows your veterinarian to test blood glucose every one to two hours to get a clearer picture of what happens over the course of a day. Once can insulin starts to work, Oliver will start to return to normal. If his diabetes is well regulated, he'll be a much happier cat. It is important to stick to a routine that includes regular meals and activity. If your cat is overweight, your veterinarian can develop a safe program to help him lose weight gradually. For many cats, a special diabetic diet that is high in protein and low in carbohydrates can be very helpful in regulating their blood glucose. Too much activity, excitement, illness or stress can lead to a loss of regulation. In particular, a relative overdose of insulin can lead to a lower than normal blood glucose or hypoglycemia when starting insulin treatment, increasing the insulin dose or changing the insulin product, it's important to watch very closely for signs of hypoglycemia. The signs of hypoglycemia include lethargy, dullness, trembling, loss of balance and in serious cases seizures and a loss of consciousness. Hypoglycemia can be a true emergency situation. You need to keep a source of glucose, such as glucose powder or corn syrup, on hand for emergencies. The powder can be made into a paste or solution with a little tap water. If your cat shows any of these signs and is able to eat, feed a small meal of its usual food immediately. If your cat is unwilling or unable to eat but is able to swallow, rub small quantities of your emergency glucose source into its gums. Do not force anything into your cat's mouth, as you may risk getting bitten. If you believe that your cat is suffering from low blood glucose, please contact your veterinary team as soon as possible. Your veterinarian may also show you ways to monitor your cat at home. Keep a record of any unusual signs and the results of any measurements you take in a diary, so you can report anything unusual to your veterinarian. This diary is also a helpful place to keep track of your cat's activity, water intake and eating habits. 
You may also choose to monitor your cat's blood glucose at home using a glucometer. This provides your veterinarian with additional information on how your cat is doing on its current insulin dose. You should record the results of each test in the diary. So remember, in order to keep your diabetic cat healthy at home, you should encourage a regular diet and exercise. Always be prepared for hypoglycemia. Monitor your cat closely and keep a record of any measurement you take at home. Cats with diabetes can lead a happy life when you maintain a regular daily routine and they are regulated on can insulin. For more information about can insulin and vet pen, please visit www.cat-dog-diabetes.com.